Hello, this is Christian. Welcome to episode 5 of, of this video series. In this uh, video, we're going to do a little demo to put all these together, the classes, tra traits, and interfaces, and how they are used in a program. So um, let's go and take a look. All right, so in the IDE here, I'm going to create, I know I call classes, but um, I, that's okay, I guess. Um, let's go and create, let's just say that for our example, I'm going to create a um, a class called plants. So I'll call it plants file. Okay, and also um, I already have animals. I'll use this animal. Um, yeah, I'll use this animal uh, to compare with the, the plant. And let me just collapse this, and I will use a two screen to show you what. Well, not that way. Vertically, I guess. Uh, we can close this one here. Okay, so we can kind of compare between the two here. So on the left side, let's say I'm going to use the plant, and then the right is animal kingdom. Okay, so uh, for now, let's say I'm going to create my class for the plant first. So I have a class kind of similar to the animal kingdom, and uh, uh, I'll call it plant kingdom. Okay, and then this plant kingdom has something in there. I can also make this as an abstract to kind of match what I have over there. Okay, and they have a class called the actual plant. I guess we call it uh, I don't know what tree, right? That is well, I mean trees are really a plant. Let's call it a spruce to be more specific, and that it will extend the uh, plant kingdom. Oop. Okay. So here we go, and then I can create an object here, P for plant. Um, yeah, well, S for new spruce. Okay, so I have two objects kind of similar to what I have over here, and these are just constructors, so um, let me turn these off, and so we don't have to show any of those stuff. And this one here is something else. I want to turn that off, remove that. So they look very similar to what the other plant class is. Okay, so we have two separate uh, sets of, of classes. One is for the plant kingdom, one is for the animal kingdom. And so what is the point here, I guess? Um, I don't have an interface here, right? So we could have an interface to create something that is very generic that the animal and the plant kingdom must implement. So how do we do this? So we can create, um, let's put it on the animal side. Um, let's create an interface. Uh, we call it uh, just a I for interface. And I'm just going to call it uh, type. I don't know. I'm just making this up, OK? <laughs> and so let's just say inside here, I have a function uh, called uh, you know set type. And also have a function called get type, right? I'm just thinking this so we can we can use it. And so it's an interface that both of these um, you know animal kingdoms will use. And I'm gonna ex I'm gonna implement that as well. Implements the i type. And then this also implements that i type. So now both of these have those interfaces but now they have to implement that right implement uh, those uh, functions um, because they both use it so in this case I have to uh, implement of both of those which is required you can either do that or you can implement inside the abstract class so you don't have to um, uh, do it right so oh, I, I should have put it in the wrong place um, implement type yeah yeah that's that's correct all right, so then because they're required, I can do inside here in the abstract class. So I don't have to do it down here. If I do it in here or in here, you see that I have to do it both of them. And depending on uh, how these functions are used, okay, if they are used uh, differently, then that's great. If it's not, then it's redundant, but you have no choice because you are stuck with it, right? Because you have to use it. So therefore, I'm going to go and just put here, uh, implement the methods down here in my Animal Kingdom class. 
and the mammoth class. They are in here now. And let me turn these off so you can see. I'm going to turn this off just to show that they are in here. Okay, I'm going to just collapse these. So we have that implementation. The mammoth is happy. The plant, the spruce tree must also implement those to make it happy as well. So here they are. And then they are both good to go. Okay. So you can see how interfaces can be uh, played uh, in this scenario. It's something that can be shared across uh, two different classes now. Now let's say that in the uh, plant kingdom um, has a really important function called maybe uh, put again I'm going to put public here function uh, something like uh, what, what should we call it uh, determine age okay the age of something right the age of the plant or whatever that is so its function can also be used to determine the age of an animal so I say hmm I'm just using one example here it could be a bunch of functions or useful functions that the animal kingdom can also use so instead of you know recreating these functions in here again and these are full implementations right so the act the interface they're not implemented so you have to do that yourself manually inside here in, for each subclass but let's just say that the animal kingdom the plant kingdom has some functions that are really useful and I want to use those in the animal kingdom too so I don't have to recreate them again because what they do is very similar in nature or exactly the same so what do you do how do you solve this problem well I don't want to re rewrite them here so you can say okay well um, maybe I can then make a uh, another class, right? Another class that can can use and share this functions in both uh, classes. So you can say, okay, well then I'm, let me go and create another class up here, um, a, a maybe another abstract class called uh, species. Okay, so I put these functions or is all these functions in the species class, and then now this plant kingdom can implement the interface but also can extend the species class so um, you can see how that works let me kind of minimize a little bit like a little bit smaller but uh, I apologize so here same thing so if you want to use those functions I can just again animal kingdom can extend the species class and so now I have both have access to the same functions in the species class we can extend that as well All right so my mammoth have access to that if you go in here type m dash you'll see they have the determined age right absolutely same thing over here s and then have determined age so I solved that problem cool huh okay so and then um, another scenario will be like um, say you have another class okay out of out of somewhere uh, another class and this is nothing related to species at all or the animal kingdom I'm just gonna make this up say I have another class called uh, math okay some kind of math class and this math has a really important function called um, you know special special class a special function like it's special calculator that is really useful for my for both of the species or the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom here okay <clears throat> so uh, you want to be able to use those and so you can say well okay because I can extend these classes of course if you extend the species class right if you extend that to the a math class then problem is solved of course right if you do that and you can see that down here I have S points to my special calculate class right same thing with the M over here oops you can, you saw already special class there you go problem is solved right so this scenario it's fine but let's say you have some restrictions or you don't want because this math class um, you know has a lot of uh, um, uh, functions um, how do I how do we do this okay so let's just say you don't want to you know extend this class to the species class 
Okay, you don't want a species to extend this math class, or you are prevented from doing that. Or let's say that you don't have access to that extension. Okay, so you cannot extend the uh, the that class. So the species cannot extend because, again, you are given this class as a species class has this function. You can use it. You can extend it to use it. But you also want to get this class from the math class. And since you cannot, you know, uh, alter the species class, it's locked. It's not. It's not public to you. And you really want to use its functions in here. Well, you either have to, you know, create them yourself, or you have to forego one or the other. Okay. And this is where traits come into the picture, right? Traits come in place. Um, so, of course, this class, I'm assuming that you have your own, you know, your own um, uh, implementation. So you can implement this math class and include these functions inside the plant kingdom. All this, yeah, the plant kingdom. This is your your, your kingdom. And so you have these functions, and you also want to share these classes or these functions and the animal or the mammoth uh, class too, right? But but you can't because you can only extend one class at a time. So you have limitations. So therefore, you can say, okay, I want to turn this into a trait. Okay, so the trait again works very similar to another class. So with a trait, you can then use that inside the either the spruce or the plant kingdom. If let's just say these are your classes that you create, and this is the only class that you are not allowed to create, you can extend it, but you cannot touch it. So um, you can put it here or in here, depending on which level you want to use. Let's say I'm going to use inside the plant kingdom. Then here. You would just go and use it, use the math. So now I use that in here. I can also use in the animal kingdom. So you can see that now I have access to all the functions in the species, the functions inside the math, and implement my interfaces all together. Okay, so now, and then any other class, any other kingdom that um, belongs to the species. Maybe you don't want to use, you know, the math class. They don't have to because, you know, it's not part of the species. And if it's not useful to that class, then you don't have to use it. Okay. So, um, so have a math class. You can have, a, you can have another trait, you know, for something else. For example, you can say trait, um, I don't know, um, service. I'm just making this up. Okay. <laughs> and the service has a public function. That has a really, really um, service IT. Of course, has no relation to this, but has a really important function you want to use. And so, okay, well, it doesn't apply to species or um, the plant. It does apply to the animal. So you add that to your animal kingdom. So here we go. I have borrow right some functions in the math service and the species all together to my mammoth. So my mammoth now has access to all of them. So M has, you can see, has the service IT, right? Has the, um, all the other functions that are, are special calc. Oh, I did that already. All right, so it gets uh, pretty messy here, but at least you can see where traits are, how they play a role in your program and interfaces are as well. Of course, when you design this program, if you are the designer developer, you have this, you know, you have some designing to do, right? And if you are the user only, if you're given only this interface or these species uh, uh, classes, abstract classes that you are required to use, then you must implement any function in the interface. You might implement any abstract functions. If I have an abstract functions in here, uh, abstract function called um, sol solve, for example, that you must implement those in your subclass as well, as you can see here. And, and again, just a rule, right? So you have no control over that. And if you want to add more functions from another class or some of the class you wanted to create yourself, and you want to share those classes with other classes that you own, then of course, trait is the solution for that. Because you can either, again, in this case, forego the species, or um, if you want to use them, then you have to create traits to 
provide other services or functions to your class. Okay, of course, you know, our our assignments will probably won't ever get to this part, but um, I just want to give you a, a, a look up ahead in case if you ever run into a large project in, in like this scenario. I mean, it saves you a lot of typing, a lot of redundancy, because you don't want to recreate all these functions that are very similar or actually exactly the same in your uh, classes. All right, so um, I hope that at least gives you a kind of like a, a picture of what uh, the complexity of these are, but of course the power of using classes, traits, and interfaces in your program. So let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.